goodness. Howdy, folks. Howdy. Sean Brock here with you. Happy St. Patrick's Day to each and every one of you. If you haven't subscribed, please do so and call your mama and tell her to subscribe. You know your old ma would like to hear about some guitars. Anyhow, today we got a real uh, special treat. This is one uh, built by a guy that uh, is a lot of folklore, legend, myth, uh, wonderment, whatever words you want to use, has been built up about this dude on the internet. And I'm talking about none other than Rufus Thames or Rufus J. Thames to you. Yes, sir. Rufus Thames, Bristol, Virginia, just a mere inches over in, into the Commonwealth there, out of the uh, country music capital of Bristol, Tennessee. And Rufus, this is number 18. This is duded out. Now, this is built from the tree mahogany with a little extra special sauce in it. And I think Rufus is 21 or two guitars in as of this. And this was uh, delivered to us by our good buddy Kevin Wright from Humboldt, Tennessee. And uh, Kevin is the proud owner of this. And as of uh, this video, he just wants to have it up so people can hear Rufus's work and, and, and kind of get an idea of what the guy is doing because so much talk has been going on. This is a uh, pre-war spec guitar, and we'll get into most of the specs as I can remember them. But you check out that description box. Kevin wrote a real nice description. Uh, and I'm I'm going to paste that. Check out that description box below for a pretty thorough list of some of these things because I'll forget something like these Maltese cross inlays that are kind of special. But let's check her out and see what you think of the sound of, of this 37 inspired uh, D18 from Rufus Thames. <laughs> Check out the treble on this thing. This thing's got the trebles, all, not quite as, but almost as fat as me. Real nice carryover. Ain't that sweet? So let's hear the bass on this. Now, my experience, and these things are, are opinion. Somebody somewhere has tried to measure it and failed, but uh, 
my experience with the tree, uh, having played from several builders uh, and playing both mahogany style, 18 style guitars they've made from the tree and ones they've made just out of, uh, you know, kind of your run of the mill Honduran type stuff. Usually the tree to me, and I'm not trying to sell anybody on this, but it seems to me that it's a little more bassy or there's there's something different in the lower uh, fundamentals with the tree. And I, I don't know, I guess it's probably something to do with with all of the curl that it's got in it uh, if you think about if you were playing facing a wall uh, the texture of that wall is going to affect the sound that's bouncing back towards you so it's kind of the same thing i believe with with this stuff but check out the bass on this thing <laughs> Notice it responds well to subtleties. Really nice, man, really nice. <laughs> Talking about some subtleties. We'll get you a little bit of vibrato. man let me grab the capo uh, I picked this thing up from Kevin yesterday and uh, went went brought it home and uh, got it out and tuned it up and I tell you it's it's really a fine instrument. It really is. Fine, fine looking, fine sounding instrument. Key of A.
slap to it, doesn't it? Pretty, and it mics up. It mics up real nice. Um, it's <laughs> it really enjoys microphone. It's kind of like your drunk best friend at uh, making you wedding toast kind of thing. It really enjoys a microphone. <laughs> so the old proving ground, and I already know what it's <clears throat> what it's doing because I've played it for a day. B flat. Really nice, really nice. We'll move her on down the line here. B for Bristol, Virginia, and Rufus J. Thames. <laughs> I believe she's got it. If she ain't lighting your fire, you're trying to burn some wet wood, I guess. So up here at the fifth fret, good punch, isn't it? I hope you didn't have your headphones on or snugged up into your ears or something now. Really punch. 
punch as well. Check out the colors as we usually do. Real nice palette, isn't it? That is really cool. That's really cool. Okay, man, I will forget something. I hope you look at that description box. My memory ain't what it used to be. It's out there with the old brown cow. Uh, so, all right. Let me hold it up in front of my face. So when I turn red from forgetting, you won't be able to see it. So we have a Magnum red spruce top. If you don't know about the Magnum stuff, Caleb Smith and a bunch of these guys have been using it. Um, it's out a pretty special tree near Mount that uh, was felled near Mount Mitchell over North Carolina. Um, and it's pretty exceptionally tight grain stuff. Uh, there's, plenty, there's plenty of talk about it on the internet if you wanted to Google it up. Uh, obviously, we got a uh, ebony bridge, ebony pins, uh, two and five sixteenths is the spacing, old style saddle, uh, slotted bridge, of course, keeping with the tradition of it. Something a little takeoff, um, a little different than just 18 style. You got some abalone there and your rosette. Um, Man, I'm forgetting something. Obviously, I've, I've stated before, but some of y'all don't listen. Uh, 37 styles. It's 37 spec. Rufus owns a 37D18 and a 37D28. That's what he specs off of. Um, Ebony, we already said that. So these fingerboard inlays, you got a Maltese cross. This is like a 20s thing that uh, Martin did of small run of this stuff I think for Wurlitzer uh, there's some similarity to what you see on some of the 45s from the 30s uh, Evo gold fret wire uh, you got some some heavily uh, rolled fingerboard edges very comfortable it's very nice one three-quarter nut of course it's a vintage vintage style neck of course and uh, headstock there nice torch and uh, the overlay is out of the tree. That was a real good call. That was a real good call. Waverly oval buttons. I'm probably forgetting something. A nice vintage neck, mahogany neck. So here it is. Okay, you ready? Here's your tree. The tree. The tree. Uh, the tree, you can Google that. Google the tree mahogany if, if you're unfamiliar with the uh, allure found uh, with the tree. It was felled in Belize in uh, 65, I think, 1965. And they have quickly started to run out. Here's the back. Well, not quickly. I mean, been using it for a while. Uh, but instrument grade stuff is getting hard to find there's some people that have some sets did you get a good look at that back besides i'll roll it again roll it kind of slow 
and uh, this is costly stuff it ain't cheap it is not cheap and I guarantee you I'm just gonna keep rolling it back and forth I guarantee you I have forgotten something in the specs on this so please do see the description this this was signed uh, December 23rd but I don't think and I could be wrong because I ain't Rufus uh, Thames so in my memory for dates ain't no good no way um, I'm, I'm thinking it was signed on the 23rd of December 20, uh, <clears throat> 2022, but not actually fully what you would call complete. Finish is lacquer. Uh, again, keeping with the tradition. And Rufus, if you don't know anything about him, he uh, he is have made a living professionally as a, a pretty in-depth machinist. So... Uh, numbers is his game, making things to high tolerances, uh, spec'd out to high tolerances and engineering uh, components for sophisticated items that require high tolerances. So obviously owning a 37 uh, uh, D28 and a 37 D18 and having the skill set that he has is a uh, pretty good recipe and uh, uh, I don't have all I don't have not even one of the three but I know a good recipe when I hear it uh, strap button is installed at the heel I, I guess you've probably seen that it uh, you know because it's a guitar you're supposed to play it hopefully you'll play it um, so that's kind of Rufus in a, a nutshell there are a few differences in this and a pre-war but they're they're very few as far as the spec and of course the evo gold fret wire and rufus believes strongly in using a truss rod and i've had that discussion on here many times uh i, I concur with that uh, thought myself but um uh, that's that's pretty well uh your differences uh, this neck is very nice. Y'all who know me know that I love uh, mid-30s inspired, Mark, Martin inspired necks. <laughs> you've heard it so I think you know what you've heard uh, this is a very lightly built guitar I'm not saying it's going to implode on you that's not what I'm saying I'm saying it's very lightly built though there's a there's a dryness but there's still carryover you hear that Here's something to illustrate the dryness and, and will illustrate kind of the that tight uh, 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 you feel. You know, with, you feel that in old, old guitars. The, the, the punch ain't just down here. The punch is very much in the middle. And you've got it here. Uh, good, good punch. Uh, but this will illustrate it, and I'll let you all go. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Kevin, for uh, having this thing on. Thank you, Rufus, uh, for all your great efforts and for being a, a picker who who is uh, will, willing to take on dealing with building. I wouldn't be. But if you haven't subscribed, please do. Appreciate you all. God bless you, and take care.